Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Steven Ellistad. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel. Follow on social media. So in my last tutorial, I started taking a look at Substance by Output. It's a really cool new contact-based instrument from Output, and it's a really fun approach to sound design, especially from a bass perspective, although you can certainly do a lot more than simply bass parts with Substance. It's a very multi-dimensional kind of tool, and you can approach the sound design or the uh, performance or production aspect of it from a couple of different you know, layers or perspectives. Previous one, I had started with a basic uh, preset, and before we even dive into any type of sound design with it, I wanted to just uh, talk a little bit about this inside of contact versus inside of control. Now, it works in both situations, and if you're not using a complete control keyboard, it's probably six of one, half dozen of the other, which one's gonna be better for your needs. Uh, I like some of the other functions in contact we can use to, you know, to work with patches and stuff, but when we're just doing sound design, you know, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. But if you're on a complete control, it maps. It's part of the NKS standard, so it maps beautifully. You know, your, your macro is right on the first page, and the controls, as they map automatically, kind of make a lot of sense. And there's some visual re representation on the control keyboard as well. But anyway, enough of that. So I've got an initialized patch here. Just as we do each of these videos, I'm going to look at a different aspect of substance. In this one, we can see that we're using the control library, and I'm looking at all banks, factory banks, or user banks. Again, I can choose by type using this kind of tag and category system. Quite a big library, some surround stuff, some cool sequence stuff. So tons of you know sound design properties. You can kind of just hear it in the character and the variety of sounds that you can make with this thing. In here, let's go back to that initialize. And so when we start out, we have our main, our edit, EQ, filter, effects, and rhythm. We can see that we have our macros page. And one thing that I didn't talk about in the last video is that when we activate our macros page from main, we actually see our macro slots and do some assigning. So we'll at least look at that a little bit in this tutorial. But first thing we need to do is we need to pick some voices. And so we have three different layers of voices. We can choose all these different categories. And then we have a selection of sounds there bass guitars synth plucks low brass and woodwinds so there's a lot of a lot of variety and options one shots complex synth synth plucks so let's see what we have here in this complex synth kind of like that Certainly not a complete sound in my mind, but one that's definitely worth you know, including as a layer. And so that's the format base. Now we can turn that on and off and adjust the volume just like that. And if we wanted to try a different bank, different one, we could just also. In fact, why don't we go with that unison bass for now? Okay, so we now in this other one, we've got a chorus synth. I'll turn off my bass. So these are kind of similar sounds, so I definitely want to get away from that. We'll stay with the simple synths, maybe add a square wave kind of sound. Pretty cool. But one thing I hear is I want to come in and edit the envelope for sure on the square wave a little bit, I think. So I think I want to keep that bass narrow. And I want to open up that square wave a little bit. All right, and I can easily go an octave up or down, or I can detune by a half step up and down, and I can do my fine tuning right here if I want. I can just drag it like that, but if I want, I can command click to go back to unison. Maybe I'll put it back up to that octave. Okay, cool. So I'm a little happier with that. I think I'd like to kind of drop the release on both sounds. So I'm still not sure what direction I want to go with this, but I think it's going to be more of a, uh, a shaped kind of bass rather than some kind of big expansive thing. 
Let's look at our third one. Right now we've got this rosewood in here. It's a bass guitar. And I think I want some, some attack, but I don't want that long decay. That adds a nice timbre, so we'll go with that one. And so we're in the edit mode. I think I want to drop that one as well as maybe my sustain. And I like that we can take a simple thing like an upright pizzicato or a plucked bass and immediately start layering it with these other things, giving it some impact and some bass presence. While still keeping that really cool digital character as kind of the forefront. I don't want to dive too much into the EQ of these right now. Um, perhaps the filter. And I think certainly on this one... And that might be a really cool one to put on our uh, macro. So I'm going to go ahead and assign that to macro 3. And there it is. So now I've got that assigned. Come back over here on my macros on macro 3. And if I want to go to macro one and assign something, I can just activate that and go over to, say, the EQ on the other base on the square wave. And we'll turn that on and let's just give it a little bit of tone to macro one and give it a little bit of a boost. Maybe tighten up that Q. So now. We've got a little little bit of frequency movement happening with that macro and now if I also come over and maybe put a pass filter on the EQ and same thing I'll put that on number one now they're both moving together and if I turn off the other ones we can hear that really clean but when I combine those together, we start seeing a little bit more. A little more balance and we can adjust our relative level so we can hear those differently. And if we need to come in then, we've got the things we assigned we like. We can just choose the name right there on the drop down. There's a lot of cool things we can do there. Maybe on this one we want to attack the release of everything. Let's assign everything on macro four to our attack. Need to find a balance that works with all of these. So we've got a nice varied attack on all three elements that's moving together. And if I need to adjust the range of one of them, I can also just do it right here. So 
So we can see assigning macros is, is pretty easy, a pretty cool way to assign multiple values to one macro, to adjust a particular range of one of them. Lots of ways to get sound control and different ways of manipulating that tone right there from the macro control. And it's just that easy if you want to bypass one or remove it. It's just that simple. So there's a quick look at kind of working with the macros inside a substance. Uh, in my next video, well, maybe we'll take a look at working a little bit more with the rhythm functions. I'm Stephen Elstead for ADSR. Thanks for checking this out. And make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. Take care.